Welcome to Altium Designer PCB Placement. In this module, we will explore placement and methods to aid placement on the PCB. Here we have the PCB post design update from the schematics. Note the rooms that were auto generated for each schematic sheet with the associated components. As a quick review, the layer stackup from the Layer Stackup Manager shows us with a two signal layer PCB. The PCB board shape is a basic one created by hand and the rules were either generated from the schematics or transferred during the design update process. Looking at the full view, we can utilize the rooms to move the schematic page related groups of components. This is a good way to start the PCB placement. We simply left click on the room, holding the mouse key down, we move the room, like with the schematic symbols, while moving the room, if you tap the space bar, the room will rotate counterclockwise, or Hold the control key down and tap the space bar, we'll rotate it clockwise. Using the combination of moving and rotating, we can get a rough placement of the components using the rooms on the PCB. Using the rooms for basic placement is a good start, and if needed, the rooms can be redimensioned to better fit within the PCB. To resize a room, left click on it to select it. Now with it highlighted, you should see both end and midpoint markers. Select a corner marker to increase both the length and width, or a middle marker to move that side. Once resized, Altium can reposition the room's components using tools. Component placement, arrange within room. Again, this is just a rough arrangement. When finished with the basic placement using rooms, I generally delete them, but if you prefer, they can be hidden using the View Manager. Hitting L and then selecting the Show Hide tab. We click on Hide for Rooms. That hides them but does not delete them. If you hide the rooms, the online DRC will still complain if the room's components are outside of the now hidden room. That is why, as I said, I normally delete the rooms after I've finished using them for basic placement. Now with the rough placement done, we can start the finer grained placement effort. Left clicking on a component selects it. We can see by it being highlighted now we can move it using the mouse by holding the left mouse button down and moving the mouse. As with the schematic symbols, we can tap the spacebar for rotations either counterclockwise or with the control key held down clockwise. One helpful technique is to use the grid settings to speed up placement of components that require a fixed spacing. As a further extension of the grid settings, one of the things I will often do is use the Edit Origin and set the origin on a particular component. That way, when I change the grid settings, all the other components that I want to have at a fixed offset to that particular component will, in fact, have the proper 250 milliliter spacing. Opening up the Snap Grid window, let's enter 250 mil. This allows us to place components at a known fixed distance. I would use this when needed, especially for PCB components that interface with an external case, say a group of LEDs, or in this case, a group of connectors. Often we want to move a group of components. To move a group, we must select it. Group selection can be done in a number of ways. I prefer to hold the left mouse button and draw out a rectangle to select the components. With Altium Designer 17, this selection method was extended into two different modes. The two modes only differ in the direction of sweep used to generate the selecting rectangle. Left to right will select only those components fully contained within the box, like this. Using the right to left sweep will select everything that the rectangle touches, like so. Notice that even the pads that were only touched by the rectangle have their components selected also. Using these two methods provides the user with options for capturing the desired components together as a group. It doesn't matter whether the box was generated starting at the top or the bottom. The only determining factor for the mode selection is left or right sweeping. If you've selected more than you intended, simply hold the shift key down and left click on the component to unselect it. Likewise, if you missed one component, Hold the Shift key and left click mouse on it, and that will add it to the selection group. Another method that is handy uses a shortcut key sequence, ESL, or Edit Select Line. I use this to pick a row of components that may have others mixed in and around them, and as long as I can have a straight line path that intersects all the components I want, this works well. 
As a heads up, the shortcuts tab on the bottom right, if clicked, will show the current shortcut keys. Likewise, the underlined letters in the menus, E for edit, S for select, and L in the touching line. As you can see, there are a number of ways to select from the edit pull-down select menu as well. In addition, there is also a deselect submenu, offering numerous options. I would encourage you to try them and become familiar with the options. You may find a favorite or two along the way. While moving groups of objects is very handy, there are other operations possible. One that I use all the time is the Align operation. With a series of components selected, either use the Edit Align submenu or the Alignment Tools icon. It looks like a series of stacked blocks. Now we can align the components to each other. With the selected group, let's try a few Align options. Align to top looks like this. Align components to vertical centers requires the added selection of the component to center the groups on. This is very handy for linear placement of LEDs or for aiding in the routing of regular PCB structures like parallel drivers, for example. In particular for RF chains, I use the alignment tool selecting pads and components that are on the signal path where the alignment is important for RF performance. Here's an example of a made-up RF chain to demonstrate this technique for alignment. You'll notice in some cases I select the pads, and in other cases I select the entire component, depending on what I need to be aligned. The end result is to have the entire chain aligned to the RF chip's output pin by using a combination of selection of both pads and components. Now we select the aligned components to vertical center and pick the RF chip's output pin. As you can see, this aligns the signal path as intended. With placement of critical components that must be fixed due to, say, an interface or an opening with a case, how do we protect them from accidentally being moved? Altium has a locking feature to provide just such protection. To lock a component, double-click on it to open up its Properties window. Clicking on the Locked checkbox will secure the component at its current location. If you try to move a locked component either directly by selecting it or its room, Altium will display a warning box. This will allow a locked component to be moved while still giving the user the heads up regarding the move affecting a locked placement. Looking for a built-in guide for placement and orientation of the components on the PCB? One useful insight is the View Connections feature. This provides live connection fly lines showing the interconnections between the components. This is normally enabled by default, but if it's not, simply click on the View pull-down menu and navigate to the Connection submenu. Here we see a few options, three for Show and three to Hide connections. Selecting the Show All turns on the fly lines. Selecting Hide All obviously turns them all off. Turning on Component connections is useful when placing and orienting a single component to reduce the crossover traces. Selecting View Connections Show Component Nets, and then clicking on the component shows its connections. It looks like rotating this component would make a difference to the routing, so let's go ahead and start to move it, tapping the spacebar to get the best layout orientation. Another option I employ almost always is the Hide Net on the Power and Ground Nets. This clears up some of the fly line clutter. When I'm working on a single net or a small set of nets, I would use the Show Net option after first hiding all of the other nets. As with most Altium modes, hitting Escape or right-clicking will leave the current mode, in this case, the Hide Nets mode. So far, all we have been doing are moving components around on the top layer. In many cases, you want to use the bottom side as well for placement of components. Placing components on the bottom side is done simply by selecting the component and when starting to move them, hitting the L key. This transposes the part to the other side of the PCB. I say other side because if the part was already on the bottom side, it would be brought to the top. Notice the pads change color to match the new layer that they are on. Double-clicking the component just placed on the bottom opens up the Properties window where we can see the bottom placement reflected in the various fields, like Designator, Layer, and Comment fields. Resist the temptation to move the components to the other side by editing their Properties window. You might miss something, like checking the mirror box for the text. While we have the component property window open, 
We could also change its rotation if needed by clicking on the field and entering a new value. One nice option that derives from the unified data model and integrated toolchain in Altium is the ability to cross-select components in either the PCB or schematic. We saw this feature in an earlier module, but at this point it bears revisiting. Going to the power supply schematic and checking to ensure that the cross-select mode is enabled, we can select a series of parts starting with a simple click and then holding the shift key down. We would continue to select the parts in the order we wish to place them on the PCB. Next, we move to the PCB and notice that all the parts are selected. While this group of components are selected, click on the Tools pull down menu and navigate to the Component Placement Reposition Selected Components option. Now the mouse has the first component selected in the schematic ready to be placed. After clicking to place the component, the next sequentially selected component is attached to the mouse and ready. Continue to place the series of components until finished. This is a great way to use the order of selection in the schematic to drive the placement in the PCB. As I probably mentioned before, I use this when creating the PCB placement for an RF chain. This streamlines the physical placement ordering. And then I couple it with the alignment tool that we already saw. It can help facilitate PCB layout yielding higher quality results. This ends the Altium Designer PCB placement module, where we cover the various ways to place and manipulate components using rooms as well as connections.